Hi guys, today we're going to be uh, changing the oil on the CLK320. It's a 2005. Um, it's going to be, the purpose of the video is just going to be to show you how simple it is to do an oil change on the Mercedes. I think it's actually easier than on like a Nissan or a Toyota just because the oil filter housing is located at the, uh, at the front of the motor on top and you don't have to like try to uh, get underneath the motor or behind the motor. So I feel that makes it a lot easier. The only thing maybe um, that makes it a little bit harder is the um, having to remove the, the plastic shrouds underneath the car to get access to the drain plug. I know that dealerships actually don't, a lot of them don't change the oil through the drain plug. They put a suction tube down through the uh, top of the motor and s vacuum out the oil, but we're going to be doing it uh, by draining the plug. Uh, so let me show you uh, what you'll need to do this. All right, guys, so uh, I got a kit from FCP Euro. Again, I used FCP Euro in other videos. Um, it's awesome because it's lifetime uh, replacement. So whenever I need a new oil filter, I don't have to buy another one. I just send them back the old one. Well, I buy the new one, I send them back the old one and get refunded. So uh, the kit came with uh, a new drain plug. I actually have two because I ordered two kits because uh, I'm going to be doing an oil change on the E-Class as well. Uh, it comes with a copper uh, crush washer and uh, obviously the oil filter um, this is a paper filter it's not like a spin-on filter and um, and I also bought this just because I didn't have one this is uh, for the Mercedes uh, housing uh, you you don't have that to get this from FCP or you could order get this at any auto parts store as long as you got the right size or even order it online or something uh, and then I also got the oil uh, we're gonna be using uh, 10, uh, 5W40 and this is the oil they're they're using now liquid molly which I know is one of the best oils out there so um, the next step is to uh, get over to the car and again you don't need a lift for this I, I don't have a lift I'm just gonna jack up the car and uh, we'll get to it Okay, we got the car up in the air. Now we have to remove this plastic uh, shrouding under here. And it looks like it's held together with some uh, eight millimeter bolts. So we'll get those removed. Okay, we got the plastic shrouds out uh, there's two of them uh, the front one is held on with six bolts uh, three on each side uh, you're gonna use a eight millimeter socket for that and then the back one is held on by four bolts same exact type of bolts so uh, you're only gonna need one one tool for that and uh, again it comes off in two pieces but you got to take out the front one first All right, now we're gonna crack open the oil filter housing. Um, I'm just putting some rags around here in case there's some overflow. Take this out. All right, now when I crack this open, more oil will come out of the bottom. So, you know, keep the uh, your container down there accessible. Okay, now we could uh, tighten the drain plug and uh, change the filter. Okay. now we could put our shrouds back on all right so now it's time to uh, change the filter um, and basically with the kit you get a new paper element filter and you get 
a bunch of o-rings okay now these o-rings have instructions on what how to put them and how not to put them uh, to, and how to put the filter on because this uh, has a certain way that has to be placed in there um, so let's uh, but that I could show you now basically I don't know if you could see but there's a little o-ring there another one there another one there and then there's a large o-ring here on the housing so that's uh, four in total and I think there might be another one after I remove the filter, but I gotta see. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I think there's one more, but let's get this uh, these O-rings off and then we could uh, move forward with the installation of the new ones. All right, so to remove the filter, we're gonna do a twisting motion. To remove these gaskets, uh, I'm going to use a pick. Just make sure you don't uh, scratch the plastic. Make sure you're only... Um, basic, basically what I'm doing, I'm just getting under the O-ring and then just going around until it comes off. That's the little one. That's the next size up. Then you got one here. And then you got the big one up here that seals the housing. Now I checked and double checked and there really is one, two, three, four. I don't see any other O-ring in here. And uh, I noticed my kit came with uh, five O-rings. It basically has two of these uh, larger ones that go here. So uh, I don't know if that was on purpose or if it was just packed incorrectly, but uh, I'm gonna start to uh, pack these uh, O-rings. I'm gonna run a bit of, I'm just gonna get some oil on them. That uh, allows them to go in easily, but it also prevents them from tearing when you're tightening stuff up. So, I mean, the uh, the large one is obvious what it is, but I just want to show you. They came with these four um, smaller ones. Also, these two are the same, so I'm just going to use one. I don't know, again, if that's intentional or if it uh, was just packed incorrectly. Grease this up. Although rings are on, now it's time to put on the filter. So the filter has these two 
very subtle black lines. Let's see if I can show it on camera here. See that black line there and another one there? It has to be inserted so that one of the black lines is not visible. If you could see both black lines, that means it's not inserted in all the way. So, um, when I look at the one I took off to see if there was like a top or bottom, but when I look at it, it doesn't seem that way. Uh, but it does look like the heavier, this heavier uh, uh, fabric here or, or twine is towards the bottom. So I'm just going to do that. But I don't think that matters. They're... And again, we're just going to use a twisting motion again to get it on. So see right there, it feels like it's on, but both black lines are still visible. So that is not on all the way. You have to keep going. black line is visible the other one is tucked in there because it's inserted all the way and you could see that it's basically there's no space here it's nice and tight and I just really hurt my wrist doing that by the way all right so let's just get get this back on the car and then we could fill the engine with oil all right let's get the filter in here it up and now we're gonna torque this to 18 pound feet Now it's time to fill the oil up. <clears throat> All right, so uh, we're gonna be using this liquid Molly uh, 5W40. That, that's part of the kit that came with FCP Euro. Uh, it takes eight quarts of oil. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put seven, maybe seven and a quarter, I'm sorry, Take that back not not eight quarts eight liters which is about eight and a half quarts so what we're gonna do is put maybe seven and a half liters and um, start the engine make sure there's no leaks that the plug on the bottom is uh, not leaking that this oil filter housing is not leaking and then after that we could um, top it off after we put the car down and uh, we could check the oil level so let's get the oil pan filled up All right, so I put uh, seven and a half liters. I have half a liter here to top it off, but I'm gonna start the engine, make sure there's no oil leaks, that the drain plug on the bottom is not leaking before I put the uh, plastic shroud back on and uh, see if everything's nice and snug. And then we could top it off. And uh, these cars don't have a dipstick. Uh, you check the oil level with the uh, cluster. So we'll do that next. All right, guys, so um, before I start the car, I'm gonna check the oil level. So the way you do that is you put the key into the second position. Let's see, and now I'll also show you how to reset the service light. But uh, what you do is you want to get to the uh, menu that says either the temperature or the miles. Uh, so that's the temperature and then you're going to press the up arrow until you get to the oil check so that's right there you stop so it's measuring the oil right now so we're just going to wait and it says oil level is okay uh, 
So at this point I was going to crank the engine over, but I'm going to show you, I'm also going to re reset here the, um, the maintenance light. So I'm just going to hit the menu button till I get to, um, the service. So service B. Uh, and then what you do is you hold the little button on the cluster, you hold that down and you wait. Okay, then it says service interval to reset press for three seconds, so you hold it again. And there you go, it's been reset. And now I'm going to crank the engine over. And I'm just going to check, make sure there's no leaks. Alright guys, so uh, as you could see, it's a pretty simple thing to do. Very hot day today. And uh, I did have a bit of a disaster. Um, but it's the dumbest thing. Basically, I'm going to tell you so you can learn from my mistakes. If you have an oil catch pan like I did here. And uh, what this does is, it, this is basically you pop it up for the oil to fall inside. Which I did, but I did not pop open this little breather. And what happened was the rate of oil falling out of the car into the uh, into this catch pan was higher than the rate of oil going in inside because I didn't have that breather open and basically overflowed and I spilled oil all over the driveway. So, um, you know, I had to run and get kitty litter and all that stuff to get it soaked up. But um, as you could see, with just some basic uh, hand tools and a jack, you could get this done yourself. Uh, pretty simple. I can't remember exactly how much the kit from FCP Euro cost. I'm going to say it was around 76 bucks. Um, I don't know if that includes tax or not, but or, or, or shipping. I think it doesn't. Um, but the point is, next time I do this, uh, I won't have to pay the $76 because I could actually, uh, I believe they also give you a lifetime uh, replacement on the oil, on fluids, which I think is insane. Um, but yeah, I believe that's how they work. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope it helps some of you out. Um, and uh, on the CLK, the next thing to do is uh, we're going to fix the motor on one of the rear windows. I'm waiting. I can't do that by myself. Uh, so I'm waiting for either my hand to get better or uh, to get a little bit of help because I basically have to take out the rear seats and uh, the, the rear uh, interior panels to gain access to that motor. So. Uh, it's a very common uh, uh, malfunction in these CLKs without the B pillar. So, anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe and like, and uh, talk to you soon. Ryan Lipson. Japan.